Hello everybody and welcome. My name is Fabian Oettel. I'm the responsible product manager for rotating machines testing at Omicron. And I would like to show you today how our Stata Core measurement upgrade option works. The upgrade option is an accessory for the CPC100 and enables you to detect potential interlamination faults in the Stata Core of rotating machines. This is why we are today in our rotating machines test room here at Omicron in Klaus. The accessory comes in two cases, a longer case and I would say a normal one. The longer case contains the rail, which allows you an automatic movement of the coil or the sensors. Additionally, there are other accessories in there, which are providing a turnkey solution for this measurement. In the normal case, we put a lot of longer cables in there. There are data cables and excitation cables, and as well, the excitation cable for the state of core. In this case, we have a standard cable, which is an eight-turn cable with 20 meters length. Of course, these cables can be extended with one of these adapters. In addition to the standard cable, we are offering as well two wire cables for turbo generators, where normally less turns are required. Now, as we got an overview about the devices, let's start with the measurement. First thing I would like to explain to you is uh, how is the software working or how is the test controlled basically. Everything is controlled via our, via our primary test manager, also called PTM. PTM is not only providing us uh, the test or the, the execution of the test itself, but also a guidance through the test. This means it shows us how to connect the setup, how to connect the devices, as well how to calculate the excitation voltage of the CPC100. For the excitation voltage, I need to know several parameters of the asset, which can be entered in this section, and certain settings and conditions for this particular measurement, which can be entered in this section. I know that, that this asset has a core length of 500 millimeters. It's a rather small hydro generator, and it has 156 slots. We would like to calculate our excitation voltage based on the winding scheme as well based on the dimensions is possible, but once the winding scheme is known, the winding scheme is recommended. In this stator we have two bars per slot, so an upper bar and a lower bar. Uh, and we do not have a rebel bar winding, but we have a coil winding. This means we have two turns per coil. In this particular case we have only one turn or one parallel circuit per phase. And you see here already uh, a voltage pops up which is 6.18 volts for 4% of a rated flux. So this is fine. I would like to test my stator at 4% of the rated flux with a frequency of 50 Hertz. And I'm using a 8-wire cable. This is the standard cable. As it is a hydro generator cable, um, of course, for turbo generators, as explained before, we are offering a two-wire cable as well. In this case, I was able to wrap around the cable three times and not only one time. And you see how the voltage changes to 18.54 volts. So this is basically my excitation voltage for this measurement. The excitation winding itself in this case was not placed in the middle of the bore of the stator, but on the side. It's just an easier setup. It's just more comfortable to set up. It doesn't make any differences in this uh, state of for the measurement. The only thing to consider is that the sensor should not come too close to the excitation winding, otherwise the measurement results are influenced. As a rule of thumb, 10 slots are enough. Disadvantage of this setup is of course that I have to play, replace my excitation winding at least once if I'm measuring the whole thing circumference. Before starting with the real measurement, a calibration needs to be performed. For the calibration, the CPC100 injects a known current to the SCU1 where the Chetok coil is placed in the calibration slot. The Chetok coil should have the same width in this case as for the real measurement as well. To check this distance, which is basically the distance between the edge of two slot teeth, we need to adapt or adjust this coil, and I'm doing this now in the stator. To get the correct distance between one slot teeth edge to the other slot teeth edge, I'm placing my coil support to the stator core, 
and I'm checking if this line is in alignment with the slot teeth edge and this line is in alignment with this slot teeth edge. As you can see here, in this case, the coil is too narrow. Therefore, I'm adjusting it a bit and I'm getting now, now the correct distance of the width of the Chattock coil. We have measured now the correct distance of two slot teeth in the stator core. To make a correct calibration, we need to take over this distance to the calibration slot of the SCU1. Therefore, I'm disconnecting my sensor and I'm entering it to the calibration slot. As you can see, the Chattock coil cannot move freely in the, stator slot, in the calibration slot as we, add, as we added some rubber on top of the, of the coil. So I just need to enter this into the calibration slot. Then I'm connecting it to the SC1. And then I can adapt the width of the coil correctly by placing the coil mount next to it and then make the adaptions. Just like that. Perfect. After setting up the calibration according to the calibration setup, we can start to measure the calibration factor. Now you see the test is ready for execution and I can start or I can press the I.O. button on the CPC 100. As you can see, a defined current of approximately 1 amp is injected to the state SC1 and a certain voltage on the coil is measured back, which defines a ratio of approximately, in this case, 40 millivolts per amp. After this ratio or the voltage on the coil becomes stable, we can press the stop button and this ratio is then taken automatically as the calibration ratio for the measurement. Now we are ready for the measurement. The measurement is done automatically by the rail, which moves the sensor over the stator surface. Strong magnets are holding the rail to the stator core. And especially if the stator core is shorter than the rail length, these pads need to be moved accordingly that they are still within the stator core. Just loosen these screws a bit and then move the pads depending on the length of your stator core. Once you have found the, route, the right position, just tighten them again and everything is safe. Additionally, we are providing fall arresters, which are ensuring that the rail is not dropping and is not falling down to any critical part of your machine. The last parameter we need to enter for the measurement is basically the length of the traveling of the coil. To measure this length, we have added some of these markers, which, are, which can be placed basically on the, the, the top and the bottom of the stator core. And then you only need to read the value which are these markers are indicating. And this can be then um, entered in the primary test manager software. As you can see, everything is ready for the measurement. I attach the coil together with the coil mount to the rail. And I adjusted it that the pads are roughly two to three millimeters away from the core surface. This is a quite a good distance. This adjustment only needs to be done once for the entire core because all the distances are then equal or more or less equal and in a range which are not influencing the measurement. As you can see, I just placed the rail inside the stator. Of course, I could take as well the CPC 100 inside and the laptop inside and control everything from the laptop. This wouldn't be a problem at all. But I decided, for reasons of simplicity, to control everything via our mobile phone app, which is called PTMate. Here you can connect directly to PTM. All the settings are taking over. And then I can just record or press the record button. And then everything works directly on the mobile phone. You can see as well the real-time values and as well all the settings you have done. I have to wait now until the scan or the measurement of the slot is finished. And then after the coil goes back to the start position, I can remove the rail to the next or place it to the next slot. 
Removing the rail might become a bit tricky at the beginning, but it's not a big issue at all. And after two to three times, you are used to it. Just as a hint, I always re release the rail with a turning position, so the release gets much easier. And then I place it to the next slot. With a turning movement, of course, not a turning position. And you see, next slot is scanned, and the measurement principle, or the principle itself, just repeats. I think it's not necessary to scan all the slots of the entire data, because otherwise the video becomes too long. But I just want to show you uh, another slot, because I made a small artificial fault in this area, and then you can see how the values are changing in this area. Again, turning position to release it, and then place it to the next slot. Once again, back to the PT mate and record the next slot. Yeah, the coil moves now towards this artificial fault, and then hopefully the fault is detected. As you can see, this is the case, and the quad value is much higher than the 100 milliamps, which is normally considered as a critical value or a critical limit for any spots to be investigated. Okay, this was it more or less from the automatic mode. Let, let's move to the, to the manual mode now. For special cases, we are offering as well a manual mode. In this case, the handle needs to be adapted to the coil mount. Afterwards, everything is done manually, and as well, this, the recording of the measurement values is done manually. Such special cases are, for example, if you want to make a local diagnosis or in large turbo generators, for example, where there's often an end area of the stator core which is stepped. After the measurement is finished, you can make an interpretation by help of the heat map. With this heat map with adjustable limits, we can see immediately where the critical areas are. Thank you very much for watching this short introduction about our stator core measurement upgrade option. I hope I could give you an idea about how the measurement works. And if you are interested or if you want to have more information, please visit our website. Thanks a lot and goodbye.